Solo Leveling by Chu Gong Chapter 14 Part 1 Shadow Monarch Oh, right! A thought crossed his mind. This isn't time to dawdle. He'd just witnessed the power of his new skill. He could turn monsters he defeated into his soldiers, and there was one monster nearby that he absolutely had to make his minion. He climbed to the top of the pile of armor that once was the Iron Golem. From this higher vantage, he was able to scan the whole dungeon at once. Jean Wu squinted, and there it was. He immediately headed in that direction. TMP, 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 TMP. He was so impatient that he arrived in a matter of seconds even without using dash. Gulp. Jean Wu swallowed nervously. As he looked at the lifeless husk, he wanted to use shadow extraction on. The knight was in the exact same spot where Jean Wu had left it. Igris the Bloodred. The state of the Crimson Knight embedded in the wall indicated how fierce the previous battle had been. Jean Wu stood before Igris. Only several hours earlier, it had been a formidable enemy that had endangered Jin Wu's life. But now, it was the best raw material he could hope for. Jean Wu was relieved to see the same vapor coming out of Igris. Shadow extraction is possible. His face lit up. Great. He knew the drill. He took a deep breath and uttered the command word. Arise! This was the trigger for activating the shadow extraction skill. But nothing happened. Jean Wu was confused. But a chime sounded before he could try again. You have exceeded the number of shadows you may extract. To extract another shadow, you must release and return any or all shadow soldiers to the void. Shadow soldiers sent to the void may not be recalled. All right, he'd seen that at the end of the skill information. Active shadow extraction, 30 thirtieths. The maximum number of shadows he could extract was 30, which meant his current army stood at 30. Jin Wu turned around. The shadow soldiers had followed him and were now standing at attention. When did they follow me? They moved as silently as shadows, which was fitting, given what they were. Getting back to the point, in order to extract Igris's shadow, the system said he had to release one of them. But, he felt bad about getting rid of any of his soldiers. Even though he'd known them for only a few minutes, he was already attached to them. Jin Wu reluctantly scanned his troops. Each time his eyes focused on one, its name and level appeared. Shadow Infantry LD.1 Regular Rank Shadow Infantry LD.1 Regular Rank They all had the same name and level. Their origins are identical, so... And then, he came across three that stood out from the infantry in the back of the group. Those are... Unlike the infantry, this trio wore robes. Shadow Mage LD.1 The lead rank Ah! Jin Wu quickly made the connection. They were the three mages who had controlled the Iron Golem. They too had become undead with his command. 27 infantry and three mages. This was why being rare was to one's advantage. He exempted the mages from his selection as they were fewer in number and eventually settled on an infantry soldier next to him. Apologies. Release. FW Sage. The soldier turned into black smoke, which dispersed into still air, leaving no trace. Jean Wu looked apologetically at the spot where the soldier had stood before refocusing his attention on Igris. He'd had to sacrifice one of his precious soldiers to make Igris a shadow. This had better pay off. He struck while the iron was hot and attempted the extraction right away. Arise! Igris's previously motionless shadow began to twitch as if it were coming to life. Let's go! He squeezed his fists tight. He had a good feeling about this. Beginning shadow extraction attempt. Attempting to extract. What would Igris look like as a shadow? 
Jinwa's palms were sweaty in anticipation. But then, tink! A message appeared, accompanied by an alarm that sounded like metal snapping. Shadow extraction has failed. What? You have two attempts remaining. You? He let out a sigh of relief when he saw he had a couple more chances. It did say something about that. The explanation had mentioned that the extraction failure rate increased according to the target's ability level, but he was still taken aback when it actually happened. Since this was his first failure, it felt like a slap in the face. It also seemed like there was a limit to how many times he could try. I have two chances left. If he failed both times, would Igris return to the void like the soldier he had sacrificed? Thinking about the worst case scenario made him anxious, so Jin Wu shook his head to clear it. Let's not be so negative. Just think positive. Ask and ye shall receive, right? He attempted an extraction for the second time, filled with a mix of apprehension and eagerness. Arise! But his hopes were shattered. Tink! Shadow extraction has failed. You have one attempt remaining. Igris was as much of a pain in the ass dead as it had been when it was alive. Jinwu hadn't wanted to consider the possibility of failing twice, but... You. The hunter exhaled hard. There were no more chances after this. This was his last shot. He closed his eyes and cleared his thoughts. This might all come down to probability. Or maybe he wasn't feeling desperate enough. He slowly opened his eyes. It felt like the vapor emanating from Igris was reaching out to him, pleading for rescue. Jinwa's face turned solemn. He extended out his hand, as if trying to take the smoke by the hand. Arise! He didn't do it on purpose. Jin Wu didn't realize it in that moment, but his voice was grave and rang through the room. And then, Wuhua, out of nowhere came a chilling moan, and a cutting wind blew through the room. Is this? Jin was face lit up. The same phenomenon had occurred when his soldiers first rose out of the shadows. Hiya! Like he thought, once the moaning ended, a long black arm emerged out of the shadow. The moment the hand touched the ground, a message materialized. Shadow extraction successful. Jin Wu cheered. Yes! His success tasted sweeter because it had followed two failed attempts. And there was even more good news. The voice of the shadow monarch has awakened the dead's fighting spirit. Shadow enhancement successful. The shadow will start with a base level of seven. Enhancement successful? A soldier's base level could be higher than one? Jin Wu was in disbelief. Just as the message had said, the newly spawned knight was labeled as level 7. Huh? Jin Wu exclaimed. Igris looked just as he remembered, with a long mane on the helmet, armor of a refined design, and a majestic cloak. The only difference was that the once blood-red armor was now as black as night. Other than that, everything else was identical. If he didn't know better, Jean Wu would have mistaken this for Igris coming back to life. But, the reborn Igris held no hostility for Jean Wu. He stood there silently awaiting his orders. Ba dump, be a dump. Jin Wu's heart raced as he gazed upon Igris. He had a smile on his face. But something struck him as strange. Jin Wu's gaze moved to the space above his creation's head. Where's his name? LV.7 Night rank. Instead of a name, there were question marks. His rank is different, too. Jin Wu knew Igris's level would be higher because of the enhancement, but Igris seemed quite different from the infantry. Had the system read his mind? It sent a message with impeccable timing. Ping. You may bestow names upon shadow soldiers of a knight rank or higher. Bestowed names will be kept until a shadow is released. Please choose a name. A name? 
Jean Wu felt lost at this unforeseen request, but then smiled in relief, as he remembered that this creature already had a name. Continuing to use it shouldn't present a problem. Please choose a name. The message flashed, as if urging Jean Wu to call the soldier's name. He opened his mouth. Igris the blood. Wait a minute. Jean Wu would have to refer to the knight by whatever name he chose, which meant having to call Igris by his full name whenever he needed him. Just the thought made Jean Wu cringe. That's way too cheesy. Ultimately, he decided to simplify the name. Igris. Would you like to use Igris? Sure. As soon as Jean Wu responded, the question marks above the knight's head were replaced with his name. Igris LV.7 Knight Rank Even though Jean Wu was recycling his minion's previous name, he felt proud of what he had just accomplished. It made it feel like Igris was his. My very own soldier. Jean Wu turned around. Twenty-nine other shadow soldiers were awaiting his orders. It was still a small number. Only 30. It could be because his skill level with shadow extraction was still low, or maybe he needed to further increase his intelligence stat. One thing was for sure, his ranks would only grow. I have a legit army. It wasn't an army of skeletons and rotting corpses, but an army of shadows. Now, there was only one problem left. How was he supposed to go anywhere with these guys? The thought gave Jean Wu a major headache. It doesn't matter whether they're skeletons or shadows. Jean Wu would definitely attract attention walking down the street with them. Not only that, but this was beyond the capabilities of an awakened being. He would be under constant scrutiny, or worse, they might demand he disband his army. Jinchul Wu, the head of the Hunters Association surveillance team, Tough-looking people like him would come around every day causing a fuss. Jean Wu felt frustrated just imagining it. That was probably why the other skill existed. Skills. Jean Wu called up the skills window. Job exclusive skills. Active skill. Shadow extraction LV.1. Shadow storage LV.1. Shadow storage. The skill he had skimmed past before. It was clear from the name that this would be exactly what he needed. Skill Shadow Storage LV.1 Job Exclusive Skill No mana required. Shadow soldiers can be stored by absorbing them into the caster shadow. Stored soldiers can be summoned or reabsorbed at any time. Number of shadows stored 0 slash 20 I knew it. Jin Wu nodded. He guessed the skill's function would be storage, because it had been in the name. But there was one thing he couldn't have foreseen. The problem is how many I can store. The maximum number of shadows he could store was less than the number of shadows he could currently create. He had raised 30 of them, but he could only store 20. That meant he had to get rid of 10 more. That sucks. The pain is the same no matter which of their own ten fingers someone chooses to bite. It was painful enough getting rid of one, but now he had to choose ten. Hmm. Jin was hard was heavy just looking at the soldiers. Naturally, Igris with his knight rank was exempt. The three unique mage soldiers were also safe. The most disposable minions were those in the infantry. Since he released the soldier closest to him the last time, this time Jean Wu went with a tin at the back. I'm sorry. He prayed for them to rest in peace. FWSHHHH. In an instant, the soldiers turned to dust and were gone. It didn't upset him as much as the first time. Is that what happened when one got used to saying goodbye? In any case, Jean Wu took one last look at his remaining ranks before activating shadow storage. All the soldiers melted like ice back into shadows, which subsequently pulled at his feet. And now they're absorbed into my shadow. As per the explanation, the soldiers permeated Jin Wu's own shadow. 
it was over rather quickly. In the blink of an eye, his army had vanished without a trace. It's hard to believe even after seeing it with my own eyes. He gazed down at his shadow and all. Then, as if the system had been lying in wait, multiple chimes rang out. Ping! You have tested all the job exclusive skills. You have completed the job change quest. The exit gate will be generated. It's finally over. It had been a long and difficult journey. Jean Wu took one last look at the dungeon and was overcome with emotion. Evidence of hard-fought battles could be seen throughout. Crushed knights, cracked walls, a toppled pillar. The iron golem responsible for toppling the aforementioned pillar was now a pile of scrap metal. But he'd certainly been well compensated for all the trouble he'd encountered here. He'd earned a new job and new skills as well as his own powerful army and countless items. He curled his lips into a smile and, without looking back, turned away from the dungeon. The gate leading to the outside world was waiting, as if to congratulate him on a safe return. As soon as he set one foot through the gate, his environment instantly transformed. He was back at that empty patch on the hill the very spot where he'd accepted the job change quest. It was already five o'clock in the morning, almost sunrise. Jean Wu winced when he saw what time it was. If I knew it was going to take this long, I would have told Jaina beforehand. Thankfully, there had been times back when he worked for the association that he'd come home late because the raids had taken longer than expected. He looked over his shoulder. The gate he just exited was already gone, as if it had never been there. Huh? Looking at the empty space, it felt as if he'd been in some kind of twisted dreamland until now. But there was no way it could have just been a dream. Jean Wu thought of his soldiers with their inky black armor. As soon as he did, they emerged from his shadow. At first, he regarded them as monsters. Shadow soldiers beasts that had strolled out of shadows of the dead at his beck and call. But if they were monsters, what would one call the person who created and commanded them? Jean Wu smirked. I guess they can call me whatever they like. Jean Wu recalled the shadows. His footsteps were light as he made his way down the hill. Jean Wu slept until well past noon. Since the sun was already rising by the time he'd gone to bed, this was understandable. Ryan, Ryan. His cell phone disrupted his slumber. His hand fumbled around his pillow and grasped his phone after much difficulty. Ji Wu answered without opening his eyes. Hello? His voice was heavy with sleep. Whoa, are you still sleeping? Do you know what time it is? Jaina's appalled voice came over the receiver. In response, he asked, what time is it? Two in the afternoon. What? He squinted at the screen to check the time. It was true. You remember that the parent-teacher meeting is today, right? She sounded worried. Jean Wu slowly pushed himself up. When is it again? Five o'clock. Don't worry, I'll be there. You're the best. Call me when you're almost here, okay? She asked sweetly before hanging up. Scritch, scritch. Jean Wu ruffled his bedhead before lethargically getting up. It'd be tight if he got ready now. It's my little sister's homeroom teacher, after all. The person in charge of her senior year of high school. The most crucial moment of Jaina's education. So I can't just wear whatever, can I? He opened the closet to look through his outfits but was greeted by a musty smell. That wasn't a good sign, Jean Wu grimaced. He continued sifting through his clothes, but the only acceptable outfit he could find was the old suit he'd worn once at his own high school graduation. Does this even fit? Jean Wu tried on the suit, and as he suspected, it was too tight and hard to move. I'm definitely bigger than before. It was even more obvious when wearing his old clothes. They were almost bursting at the seams. 
So what now? As Ji Wu thought about what he could wear, he spotted the bank statements and checkbook he received from Jinho. They were for the account where the money from selling essence stones was deposited. He looked back and forth between the tight clothes he was wearing and the official documents, and a smile slid across his face. It has been a while since I've gone shopping. Before he could do that though, he had one small thing he had to take care of. Well, not exactly one small thing. He peeled off the tight suit, sat on the edge of the bed, and called up the stat window. Stat window. A long string of words materialized in front of his eyes. Ping. Name, Jean Wusung. Job, Shadow Monarch. HP, 11,035. Fatigue, zero. Level, 51. Title, Wolf Assassin and one other. MP, 1,022. Stats, Strength, 132. Stamina, 91. Agility, 111. Intelligence, 70. Perception, 93. Available ability points, 10. Physical damage reduced by 46%. Skills, Passive Skill, Unknown, LV, Max, Willpower LV.1, Advanced Dagger Wielding LV.1, Active Skill, Dash LV.2, Murderous Intent LV.1, Fatal Strike LV.1, Dagger Throw LV.1, Stealth LV.1, Job Exclusive Skills, Active Skill, Shadow Extraction LV.1, Shadow Storage LV.1, Item Equipped, Crimson Knight's Helmet, S, Warden's Collar, A, High Rank Knight's Chestplate, B, High Rank Knight's Gauntlets, B, High Rank Mage's Ring, B, Mid Rank Assassin's Boots, C, Ha! Jean Wu stuck his tongue between his teeth upon seeing the endless list on the info screen. It wasn't that long ago when it was pretty bare. That had been the case once upon a time, but now? His head spun looking at just his skills and the items lists. What stood out most, though, was his job. Job, Shadow Monarch. Just yesterday, it had read none, and if he was being honest, seeing they used to bother him every time he opened the step window. It bothered him because the word before it was job. Even though that wasn't exactly the case, in a lot of people's eyes, Hunters were basically the same as deadbeats when there weren't any raids. How could it not bother him to see that he had no job every time he opened the info screen? A deer that's surprised when it sees an elk will be surprised when it sees its own reflection. And Jean Wu couldn't help the twinge he felt every time he saw the job status. Even though he knew it didn't mean that he was unemployed, it still bothered him. But from this day on, it would no longer be an issue. Ha ha! Jean Wu laughed in spite of himself. I suppose I'm being too hard on myself. If he had raked in the money like other hunters, he wouldn't have cared less what other people thought of him when he wasn't on raids. But that hadn't been a possibility for him. He couldn't confidently admit to others that he was a hunter because he was an E-ranker who could barely defend his own life. I'm an E-rank hunter. Whenever he said that, people with common knowledge about hunters would praise him for doing dangerous work, but poke fun at his rank behind his back. That was what had made him so self-conscious whenever he looked at his stats. But he had a job now, or rather, a specialty. Being a hunter was still his job, so it would be more accurate to say that being a Shadow Monarch was his specialty, even though it wasn't the path I'd hoped for. Still, he had no regrets. In fact, he was very satisfied with how things had turned out. If he wasn't in his room, he would have summoned Igris and the other Shadow soldiers this very moment. Jinwu wanted to test just how powerful his minions were. 
if they could access 100% of the strength they'd had when they were alive. That's probably not the case, though. But he was giddy imagining it. Ba dump, be a dump. He excitedly ran through several raid simulations in his head. He became curious as to how Jinho would react to all this. Heh. He chortled as he imagined Jinho standing wide eyed with his mouth agape. Wait, what if? He could restore the dead, but maybe he wasn't limited to monsters and magic beasts. Can I extract shadows from dead hunters? Of course, he didn't want to imagine such a situation happening with a human being. Summoning an undead soldier from a dead person's shadow. Just thinking about it gave him the willies. But, despite this, what if I can get the shadow of an A or S rank hunter? The power he'd have would be inconceivable. If shadow soldiers had even half the power from when they were alive, he and his army would be able to clean out a high rank dungeon on their own. His heart danced at all the possibilities. Ba dump, be a dump, be a dump. But Ji Wu shook his head. Turning a human into the undead is. That would be crossing a line. Whether he could was beside the point. He wouldn't want to stoop so low. He might consider it if the deceased was an asshole who deserved it, but it's not like there are a lot of opportunities to fight other hunters. Even if such an opportunity ever presented itself, there would be several problems. Chief among them being that a human wasn't the same as a monster or a magic beast. Right. For now, he was satisfied with the soldiers he had. Besides, I have Igris, who used to be a dungeon boss. A level 7, night rank shadow soldier. How powerful could he be? Jin Wu couldn't wait for the next raid to find out. Happily, he looked back down at the window, and his gaze drifted to something else. Title, Wolf Assassin and one other. There's one more. Ah, yes. He remembered receiving a second as a reward for completing the job change quest. Jin Wu checked the hidden title. Title, the one who overcame adversity. A title given to those who have gloriously overcome adversity. Stab values will increase proportionally as HP is lost. 1% increase per 1% loss. Awesome. This was an amazing buff that would increase his abilities as his health decreased. Wolf Assassin, with its 40% buff against animal type monsters, made for a great title too, but it had its limitations, making it difficult to get any use. If I'm not facing off against animal type magic beasts, it's basically like I have no title. But now he'd acquired a new title with a handy buff that also complemented the passive skill willpower very well. Without further ado, Jin Wu switched his title. Title, the one who overcame adversity, and one other. The title he wasn't using would be hidden, but he could change it back as needed. Next up, my stats. He received three rewards for exceeding the achievement threshold. The first had been an upgrade to a higher class, and the second had been the title. The last was a stat boost. Stats. Strength, 132. Stamina, 91. Agility, 111. Intelligence, 70. Perception, 93. Available ability points, 10. Physical damage reduced by 46%. He had 10 points to distribute. In the past, he would have allocated them to agility or perception, but the situation changed. Instead, Ji Wu invested all 10 points in intelligence. Even so, his intelligence was still only a measly 80 points. Ping. Stats. Strength. 132. Stamina. 91. Agility. 111. Intelligence. 80. Perception. 93. Available ability points 0. Physical damage reduced by 46%.
When compared to strength or agility, his intelligence was really lacking. It was even lower than stamina, which he'd ignored for a while when he had decided to focus on raising agility. Clearly, Jin Wu had severely underestimated the importance of the intelligence stat. I had no idea I would be using magic. His plan for the time being was to invest any ability points he received in intelligence. That being said, he wasn't planning on changing his fighting style. The new skill I received is also an assassination type anyway. During the course of the last battle, he gained a new skill, Dagger Throw. Obviously, this was a skill pertaining only to daggers. Skill, Dagger Throw LV.1. Active skill, 30 mana required. Cause damage by throwing a dagger. The higher the level of the skill, the greater the accuracy rate and damage will become. As I thought, Jin Wu had always been a brawler. He couldn't change his fundamentals just because of a new job or skills. His daggers would still be his primary method of attack, and his shadow skills would be his backup. At least until I give my intelligence up enough. He was armed with excellent fighting capabilities, and an assisting army to support him. His overall plans hadn't changed despite the job change quest. What I didn't expect was, the shadow soldier seemed like they'd be more useful than he'd originally thought. He would never have predicted that a boss creature would be one of them. Still, it'd be a waste of experience and training to switch up his dagger skills for his new shadow skills. And he just bought Night Killer too. If I'd known I'd become a mage hunter, I would have bought a magic wand or something from the shop. But then, he probably would have been overwhelmed by the knights and failed the job change quest. Now that he checked all the changes, Jean Wu closed out the stat window. Wait, what time is it? 20 minutes had flown by just like that. He scratched his head. I'd better pick up the speed. Jin Wu cracked a smile. His stats weren't useful just for fighting magic beasts. When he focused, time slowed down. Or to be exact, Jin Wu got faster. He opened the door and left the room, went to the bathroom and showered, dried off, picked an outfit, and stood in front of the mirror. That took him all of three minutes. He could have moved even faster, but he held back so as not to wreck his old, run-down apartment. My hair isn't completely dry yet, but he'd saved 20 minutes, so it'd dry in time. He decided to head out. Jean Wu was walking out of the room when he spotted something and paused. His house key was on his desk. In the past, he would have been annoyed as he went back to grab the key. Now, instead of walking back, he simply extended his hand in its direction. When else would I use it if not now? Ruler's hand. The key inched slowly toward him at first, but soon flew into Jinwa's palm like it was being drawn to a strong magnet. SHHHB. Jinwu grinned as he caught the key. With that, Jinwu, who had finished getting ready to leave in a matter of minutes, started whistling as he closed the door behind him.